did you know? On the 30th of January 1649, King Charles I of England, having lost a civil war, was executed by Parliament in London. The day after his execution, his head was sewn back on, and the royal body was transferred by boat along the Thames to Windsor Castle. Eager to avoid creating a shrine to his martyrdom, the government kept his burial place a secret. However, Mr. Herbert, valet to the king, knew Charles had been interred in the tomb of Henry VIII. This secret was only revealed after his death. More than a 150 years later, at the beginning of the 19th century, workmen constructing a new tomb house in St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle came across the tomb of Henry VIII, in which there were three coffins. The largest one was assumed to be that of King Henry, who was rather portly when he died. The smallest was thought to be Jane Seymour, King Henry VIII's favourite wife, who bore him a son and heir. The third coffin was assumed to be that of King Charles I, but confirmation was required. George, Prince Regent, saw this as an opportunity, and on the 1st of April, 1813, the coffin was opened in his presence. The royal physician, Sir Henry Halford, was also present to inspect the body. Identification was fairly straightforward. First of all, the name King Charles, 1648, had been inscribed on the coffin lid. Secondly, Sir Henry noted that the fourth cervical vertebra had been hewn in two. Clearly this man's head had been chopped off. The body identified, the parts were returned, and the tomb was resealed with King Charles intact. Or so people thought. You see, Sir Henry had a cunning plan. He had kept the fourth cervical vertebra, and, well, he decided to glam it up a bit. He had it mounted in gold. As bizarre and gaudy as this is, this is not the end. You see, he had this attached to a salt shaker, this salt shaker was brought out on special occasions, so that when his visitors said, Can you pass the salt? They would be shocked to find this very curious conversation piece. For around 50 years the family made use of this royal salt shaker, until Queen Victoria heard of it. She was not amused, and insisted the bone was returned. And thus ends the tale of King Charles I's neck, and the not-so-savoury, savoury condiment shaker.